Welcome students. Today I am here with the explanation of class 8 geography chapter industries. But before understanding this chapter, let's do a quick recap. In the previous chapter, you have learned three types of economic activities. Primary activity, secondary activity and tertiary activity. In that you have learned that agriculture is a primary activity and manufacturing comes under the secondary activity in which raw materials are converted in, into finished goods. For example, wood pulp is changed into paper and cotton into cotton textiles. So in this chapter, we will first understand the meaning of industry. Industry is an economic activity that is concerned with production of goods, extraction of minerals and provision of services. The example of these are production of goods is concerned with the iron and steel industry, extraction of mineral is concerned with coal and mining industry and provision of services is concerned with the tourism industry. So basically you can say that industry is where you can extract refine, produce and serve to the people and give value to the raw material. Our next topic is classification of industries. Industries can be classified on the basis of raw materials, ownership and size. On the basis of raw materials, industry can be classified as agro-based industry, mineral based industries, marine based industries and forest based industries. Let's first understand agro based industries. Agro based industries obtain raw material from agriculture that is plants and animal based product. For example, food processing, vegetable oil, cotton textile, sugar. These are the example of agro based industry. Next is mineral based industry. Mineral based industries are those industries that use mineral ores for manufacturing goods and are known as mineral based industries. These are the primary industry that use mineral ore as raw material. The production of these industries feed other industries. For example, iron made from iron ore is an example of mineral based industries. Next is marine based industry. Marine based industries are those industries that use products from seas and ocean as raw material. For example, seafood and fish oil. Next, forest based industries. Forest based industries are those industries that use forest based materials for production. For example, wood, pulp, tar and herbs. So these are the example of forest based industries. So now let's understand classification of industry on the basis of size. The size of industry depends upon the amount of capital invested, the number of labors employed and the amount of goods produced. So on the basis of size, industries can be classified as small scale industries and large scale industries. Small scale industries are those industries where it use less amount of capital and technology. Cottage or household industries are a type of small scale industries where the products are made by hand by artisans with less amount of capital and technology. For example, basket weaving, pottery are the example of small scale industries. Next is large scale industries. Large scale industries are those industries where they use large amount of capital large number of labors and huge amount of raw materials and, and superior technologies are being used to produce large amount of goods. For example, steel, iron and steel industry. 
Next, on the basis of ownership, industries can be classified as private sector, public sector, joint se sector and cooperative sector. So let's understand private sector industries. Private sector, uh, sector industries are those industries which are owned, controlled and governed by individuals or group of individuals. For example, Bajaj Auto and Tisco. Next is public sector industries. Public sector industries are those industries which are governed, controlled and owned by the government. For example, Steel Authority of India Limited and Bhilai Steel Plant are the examples of public sector industries. Next is joint sector industries. These industries are owned and operated by state or group of individuals. For example, Maruti Udyog Limited is an example of joint sector industries. Next is cooperative sector industries. These industries are owned and operated by the producers and the suppliers of raw materials. For example, Sudha Dairy and Anand Milk Union Limited are the examples of cooperative sector industries. Now, let's understand the factors affecting the location of industries. Location, industries are located only at such places where raw materials are easily available and goods can be sold easily. Many historical, geographical, economical and political factors influence the choice of location. Some of the, uh, some of the uh, factors are regular and assured supply of raw material, cheap and adequate power supply, an efficient network of transport at reasonable rates, adequate supply of skilled laborers at reasonable rate wages, availability of capital and water. So these are the factors that influence the location of industries. Now our next subtopic is industrial system. The functioning of an industry depends on a system known as industrial system. The system consists of inputs, processing and output. Inputs, it consists of raw materials, labor, cost of land, machinery, transport and other infrastructure. Processing, it consists of wide range of activities that changed raw material into finished goods. For example, weaving, dyeing, printing, etc. are the examples of processing. Next is output. Output is a finished good or the income obtained from it. Now, let us learn about the industrial regions. Industrial regions emerge when a number of industries locate close to each other and share the benefits of their closeness. Major industrial regions of the world are Eastern North America, Western and Central Europe, Eastern Europe and Eastern Asia. As you can see in the map India has also several industrial regions. Now our next topic is distribution of major industries. The major industries which you will read about in this chapter are iron and steel industry, cotton textile industry, information technology industry. Let's start with iron and steel industry. The iron and steel industry provides the base for all other industry and therefore it is also called basic industries. The product of iron and steel industry are used as raw material for other industries. Therefore, it is also called feeder industry. 
like other industries iron and steel industry too comprises various inputs processes and outputs such as in inputs it include raw materials such as iron ore coal and limestone labor capital site and other infrastructure in process the process converting iron ore into steel involves many stages the raw material is put in the blast furnace where it undergoes smelting smelting is the process in which metals are extracted from their ores by heating beyond the melting point and then it is refined last is output the output obtained is steel which may be used by other industries as raw materials now let us understand importance of steel iron and steel industry is often referred to as the backbone of the modern industry this is because almost everything is either made from iron or steel or has been made using tools and machineries of these metals materials of our day to day use starting from safety pin to our building in which we live are made from steel steel is tough and it can be easily shaped cut or made into wires it can be easily mixed with alloy metals like copper nickel and aluminium our next topic is iron and steel center in india which is located at jamshedpur tata iron and steel company limited tisco was the only iron and steel plant in india till independence Tisco was started in 1907 at Sakchi near the confluence of the rivers Subarna Rekha and Kharkai in Jharkhand. Geographically, Jamshedpur is the most conveniently situated iron and steel center in the country. Now, let us see how Jamshedpur was chosen to set up the steel plant. Jamshedpur was chosen to set up the steel plant for several reasons. This place was only 32 km away from Kalimati station on the Bengal Nagpur railway line. Second, it finds raw materials like coal from Jharia coal fields, iron ore, limestone and manganese from Odisha and Chhattisgarh. Third, Kolkata provides a large market to this region. Fourth, the Kharkai and Subarna Rekha rivers ensured sufficient water supply. So, above are the favorable factors for the location of steel plant at Jamshedpur. Now, let's learn about the important steel city of the USA, Pittsburgh. It is an important steel city of the United States of America. As other steel plants, it also enjoys favorable geographical conditions such as raw materials like coal is available locally. Iron ore comes from the iron mines at Minusta from ab about 1500 km from Pittsburgh. The famous Great Lakes waterway provides one of the best routes for shipping between Minusta and Pittsburgh. The Ohio, the Monongahela and the Allegheny River provide adequate water supply. So these are the locational advantages of Pittsburgh. Now let's learn about cotton textile industry. The cotton textile industry is one of the oldest industry in the world. Textile industry use two types of raw materials: natural fibers and man-made. 
Example of natural fibers are wool, silk, cotton and jute. Example of man-made are nylon and rayon. In India, the first mechanized textile mill was set up in Mumbai in 1854. Mumbai and Gujarat are best suitable places for the industry as the climate of these states is moist. Secondly, the black soil of these states are best suited for the cultivation of cotton. Thirdly, they have a better means of transport and are linked with other parts of the country. Our next topic is cotton textile industry of Ahmedabad. It is located in Gujarat on the banks of the Sabarmati River. After Mumbai, it became the second largest textile city of India. The first mill was established in 1859 in Ahmedabad. It is now known as the Manchester of India. Now let's see the locational advantages of Ahmedabad. Ahmedabad is situated very close to cotton growing area. The climate is ideal for spining and weaving. The flat terrain and easy availability of land is suitable for the establishment of the mills. The densely populated states of Gujarat and Maharashtra provide both skilled and semi-skilled labor. Mumbai port nearby facilitates import of machinery and export of cotton textiles. Now the third major industry is information technology. The IT sector deals in the storage processing and distribution of information. The ideal factors due to which this industry become global are resource availability, cost and infrastructure. The major hubs of IT industry are the Silicon Valley in California and Bangalore in India. Now, Let's see the locational advantages of Silicon Plateau in Bangalore and Silicon Valley in California. Bangalore is located in Deccan Plateau while Silicon Valley in California is located next to the Rocky Mountains. Both have clean environment. They have pleasant climate throughout the year. There is they are close to major roads and airports. There is good access to market and skilled workforce. They are close to some of the most advanced scientific and technological centers in the world. So this is all about the chapter. I hope this is clear to everyone. Thank you.